USGS probes magma reservoir to improve eruption forecasts, volcano under Yellowstone shifts northeast. Yellowstone's massive caldera sits beneath parts of Wyoming, Montana and Idaho, but a new analysis finds that the magma reservoir in the western part of the caldera is fading, while the viscous rhyolite magma reservoir has shifted northeast. Although the reservoir beneath northeastern Yellowstone could hold enough magma for a caldera forming eruption, none of the reservoirs are likely to erupt anytime soon. Yellowstone has had three caldera forming eruptions in the past 2.1 million years with the last one occurring about 640,000 years ago. The eruptions got their name because they spewed out such a large amount of lava that they collapsed the roof of the magma reservoir beneath the volcano, forming a basin-shaped caldera. Smaller eruptions, the last of which occurred 70,000 years ago, have occurred in between these major events. Previous studies have used seismic data to assess the magma storage beneath Yellowstone and have found evidence of magma beneath the entire caldera. However, seismic data can be affected by the temperature, pressure, and volume of the magma, making it difficult to discern the true spatial distribution of the magma. In the new study, published in Nature, the researchers turned to a methodology known as magnetotellurics to more accurately map the extent of the magma beneath Yellowstone. Magnetotelluric instruments measure electrical and magnetic variations in Earth's crust. The liquid part of the magma, known as melt, tends to be more conductive than the surrounding rock, so collecting magnetotelluric data across the caldera allowed the team to map the distribution of the melt beneath it. We wanted to use this technology to see if we could improve the constraints on the melt bodies beneath Yellowstone, the locations of the melt bodies, and maybe even the composition and evolutionary state of each of these melt bodies, which is really a magical thing, said study co-author Adam Schultz, a geophysicist at Oregon State University. Magnetotelluric data reveal several small, isolated magma chambers beneath Yellowstone. The two largest chambers, likely filled with low-viscosity basaltic magma, are located to the southwest, between 20 and 50 kilometers, 12 and 30 miles, underground. Further northeast, smaller chambers form the largest reservoirs of high-viscosity rhyolite melt in the caldera. The chambers occur at shallower depths, between 4 and 20 kilometers, 2.5 and 12 miles. There are rhyolite chambers in the western part of the caldera but the researchers say they are not connected to the lower chambers and will eventually cool over time. That would cause rhyolite volcanic activity in these areas to slow down, the researchers write.
These rhyolite chambers are likely remnants of the last caldera forming eruption, Schultz explains, and they are still cooling. They provide heat for all the beautiful fumaroles and other hypothermal features that make Yellowstone Park what it is, but they are unlikely to be the source of any future eruptive activity in the caldera center. In connected places to the northeast, however, lower basaltic melts may be migrating to the surface, heating the overlying rhyolite melts. The largest of these rhyolite chambers could hold between 388 and 489 cubic kilometers of melt, a volume similar to the caldera forming eruption 1.3 million years ago. However, the researchers found that none of the chambers currently contain a large enough fraction of molten melt to be eruptive. A melt fraction above 40% is needed to generate enough pressure to cause an eruption, the authors note, and the magma in each of the chambers beneath Yellowstone is less than 20% molten. Given the connection to deeper heat sources, future small-scale eruptions in the northeast are possible, Schultz said. But, he noted, it may not be so much on a human time scale, but more on a geologic time scale. Using magnetotellurics to study the reservoirs of other volcanic systems like the Valles caldera and Long Valley caldera could help scientists understand how quickly volcanic systems can erupt, said Kenny Beffis, a petrologist at the University of Texas at Austin who was not involved in the new study. That's what we want to do as volcanologists, to figure out how quickly these systems respond and how much warning time we have, he said. 